Good day, RGV. Today on Valley Por Vida, we're talking about Garub on the go. Food for watching the big games this March. Now, we're also going to be talking about the history of parasailing, introducing you to our pet of the week. And we're also going to break down the latest must-see films. Plus, so much more. The show starts right now. Hey there, and thanks again for joining us today. I'm your host, Danielle Bonda. And if you're a fan of sports, then there are certain times of the year that are especially good to catch a game on TV, right? <laughs> Let's take basketball, for example. Usually the month of March is known to be full of madness because it's the time of year when everyone pays close attention to the sport. And as we know, with any big event, it's usually paired with an experience for great tasting food. Now, whether that be wings, drinks, nachos, or pretty much any other type of deliciousness, we pretty much all seem to gravitate toward food whenever there's just a big sports event. So we went ahead and reached out to a local restaurant for some helpful tips on what kind of foods are perfect for the madness <laughs> that March has to offer. Erica Antonio is here for today's Fun with Food segment. Hey, Erica, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Oh, I am good too because I smell some good things <laughs> going on right here. <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> first of all, tell us a little bit about, you know, why you think we love to have food when we're watching sports. Oh, well, I think that Latins people would just like food, like, however, it doesn't really matter what we're watching, but when we're watching sports, having some drink, uh, beer, something else, like we like to be eating something salty or yeah. sweet, you know? Oh my goodness, I totally hear that. Anytime there's a big game, I mean, people like, they, they first of all plan, you know, who's going to be invited, where they're going to watch it, what TV they're going to watch, but then next, food, right? What are we going to eat? I think that would be my first option, like my, my first question, yes. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally hear you. So you brought some really good stuff here. What can you make for us here that would be possibly a good option for, you Okay, know? look, if you don't really have time to make food at home, mm -hmm. I know you can order from some uh, different places. Yeah. So I brought some ranchero tots. Oh. This one is like I would bacon, potato, and okay. they're fried. And you can make it with some chipotle dressing. Okay. It's really good. You add just some of cilantro. Yeah. And some of tortilla strips. Oh, yeah. And I like they're those. ready to go. Oh, and one more <laughs> thing that I'm almost forgetting is the jalapenos on top. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so this is a Man. spicy and really good. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. That looks so delicious. And the really cool thing is uh, this is easy to make, right? Oh, yeah. Very easy, simple, oh, and fast. Yeah. Yes. And the cool thing also is that it's like a finger food. So while you're like cheering, let's go, let's go, and, you know, for the, you can also eat your food, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. Uh, but no, that's really cool. I love that. And then you also brought some like nachos. Oh, <laughs> yes. We have the buffalo chicken nachos. I brought it. We used the... Uh, fried chicken, okay. we add some hot sauce <laughs> on it, some jalapenos, cheese, you know, lettuce, tomato, onions, it's really good. Oh man, okay, and also I want you to like kind of break down these ingredients, like what are these ingredients, um, because this is all stuff we can use, right? Like, yeah. Tell us what we can put on our nachos. Okay, <laughs> on our nachos, I will suggest first, because I did a mistake here, but we do two go first with the cheese. Okay. Uh, we use two different kinds of cheese. Which okay. one is the melted cheese, the other one is the shredded cheese. Yeah. So you put those first, then the lettuce, tomato, onions, jalapenos, and don't forget the chicken. Chicken. Yes. Okay, but what if I want to put just like triple round of cheese? Is that okay? <laughs> yeah, you can do that, but your tortilla <laughs> chips may be going to be a little soggy. <laughs> but don't that? complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally get you. That's, that's so funny. But this is really cool too right here because, oh my goodness, tell us what this is. Okay, pretzel bites. Those are my favorite. Oh this my like, you know the little pretzels? You put just some yeah. uh, salt on top. Oh. This one will give like a, a different salty flavor. Okay. And then we use white cheese oh, and man. our secret salsa and then some jalapenos. Wow. Too. And, you just dip. and then you dip it. Yes. And oh it's really good. Goodness. Though. You yeah. guys, this is amazing. Um, you know, it, it, it's fun to have meals when you're watching, you know, sports, but finger foods are the best. Snack, oh, yeah. it's to go, it's easy, it's really good. Um, so really quickly pick which one's your favorite? 
Brits are the best, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> All right, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and finish these right now, but you guys, um, it, it's really interesting to, to see how much food has a connection to us when we're you know talking about sports and things like that. So please, you know, take some of these tips and use them at home if you can. Thank you so much, Erica. Thank you, my pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. There you go, plenty of new ideas for you when it comes to game day grub uh, from Erica and her team. And we hope that your basketball team wins, uh, whoever it may be. <laughs> and grub on the go is also so, you know, helpful. That's just something I made up, grub on the go. You know what I mean? Uh, it's helpful when you're planning outings with a family. And we always tell you that there is a lot to do in the 956, okay? Including over on South Padre Island, now and in the summertime. From water sports to water parks to the beach, sun and sand itself. And we're gonna take a look at one activity that you've just gotta try if you haven't already in today's What's Up RGV segment. Welcome to South Padre Island. We're here at Parrot Eyes Water Sports. No matter what you guys like, um, there, we do offer something almost for everybody out here. So as far as the parasail, uh, we do head out, out in the, uh, on the Laguna Madre Bay. We do fly in about four feet of water. So what's really cool about that is once you're up in the air and you're looking at the bottom, I mean, you can see all the marine life. It looks like you're looking at the bottom. So you can see all the marine life. Uh, we do see dolphins out there, the sea turtles, um, big stingrays uh, that are really, really cool to see from the air. So, and there's no motor or anything like that. So once you're up in the air, you're literally just like a bird up there. Uh, it's nice and quiet. Very tranquil feeling, it's awesome. The island is beautiful, especially from up in the air. You can see, uh, when you're parasailing, you can see the entire island. You can see the gulf side where the waves are crashing. Um, as far as the entire island and the bay. It's beautiful up there. We use 700 feet of parasail line when we're parasailing. So um, really depending on the amount of wind that we have is how far you'll go up. It's usually like around around 500 feet up, four to 500 feet up in the air, which is, um, I mean, that's a it's, a, it's a perfect height when you're up there. You'll be with the birds. And you can see the entire island. Uh, you can see the waves crashing up on the Gulf side. So if you guys want to bring a camera or anything like that, you're more than welcome to. And, um, and check out the view from up there. When you're up in the air, bring your own camera and you guys can get a once in a lifetime shot of, the, of yourselves up there with the entire island in the background. Whether you're a thrill seeker or a little bit nervous, uh, don't worry. We take all precautions necessary uh, for the parasailing. And um, so we have full body harnesses that everyone is uh, attached to and we make sure that we go above and beyond for everyone's safety. See, if that doesn't make you want to try parasailing, then I don't know what will. Or maybe I do. <laughs> maybe these fun facts about the sport will do the trick. All right, so get this. This is so interesting. According to windandwatersports.com, parasailing was actually not created on purpose. Apparently, it wasn't a deliberate activity at first. You know, rather, it was just discovered when a person attached a parachute to the back of a moving car, and uh, you know, a, a parachute helps you know control safe landings for the car, and they figured they could do it with people too. Later, it just kind of became you know something that we all do as an activity. Um, you know, and replacing the car with a 
human. And the site also says that parasailing comes in so many different forms. You see, parasailers can be towed by a car, like we said, <laughs> by a boat or on the beach. A boat has obviously, you know, definitely become the most popular place because it's easier and safer. But hey, parasailing can be very, very diverse. And because it's so diverse, it actually has different names. So the site says that, of course, parasailing is the most popular, but there are many alternatives that have made its way throughout history. The term parakite, for example, <laughs> came from the fact that parasailing kind of looks like flying a kite. There's also para ascending, since the parasailers ascend during the beginning. And there are honestly just so many other types of, you know, different names for it. And it's pretty interesting because the weather is usually as diverse as the nicknames for the sport. <laughs> what I mean is you can only go parasailing if the weather conditions are suitable. You can't just go out anytime you want. And the site also says that the ideal parasailing flight uh, will see wild winds from 12 to 27 at miles an hour, but if winds are not between that range, it can be very dangerous. So it's really interesting. And I keep referring to parasailing as a sport, but I really should stop because according to the site, it's not actually a sport. Apparently, it's more of a leisure activity because sports require a dex dex dexterity rather <laughs> and lots of practice, um, whereas the parasailing, uh, you know, it's just re relaxing. You can just sit there. All right, well, now we're going to go from parasailing to pets in our pet of the week segment.